Okay, looks like we're live, and yet I have to quickly adjust my phone. That's why it looks like I'm in an earthquake. There we go. And let's get some... Ooh, that's terrible lighting. Hold on. Hold on, gang. There we go. Oh, looks like this is going to work out. Wait, hold on, Sarah. That's okay. <laughs> oh, there you are. I'm here. Looks like it worked. Great. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm here. Well, the glass is off. Oh. <laughs> I've got to get contact lenses. Oh. You've got so much to do this year. Looks like we've got Mark on with us and Ollie Begg. Hi, guys. How are you? Thanks for joining us. This is, as you know or don't know yet, a member spotlight. I'm going to be doing these much more in the group because I want you guys to get to know each other. And today I am talking with my friend, student, and person I'm in all around awe of, Sarah Griffiths. Thank you. Thank oh. you so much. <laughs> I don't know where you get the energy. It's just amazing. Um, I don't know either. Uh, it's not, I'm not so full of energy at the moment. As you know, right. I opened a new restaurant and cocktail bar just before Christmas. Yes. And even though I have a fantastic team, I mean, the work I've done around that has just been, yeah. I'm I'm a bit wiped out at the moment, but yeah. 2019 is still marching on, yeah. and I set myself some big goals. So I'm trying to fit it all in. Well, let's give me one second, and there we go. Now I am attractively side lit. Let's talk about those goals. What are you up to? Okay, so as you know, I have two restaurants and one of them now has a new cocktail bar next to it. And that's a really, really big project. Mm -hmm. But um, from everything I'd learned about life and the journey that I went on and everything, um, a few years ago, as you know, or a couple of years ago, I started coaching people yeah. just because people asked me how I was doing what I was doing. Yeah. And it just led me on this most incredible journey of really just really intense discovery about life and who I was and realizing I was a very different person to who I thought I was. Yeah. And that's really just all coming together for me this year. Um, obviously, I got to know you because I wanted to start to speak about what I had learned so I could share that with other people and help them grow their lives and really just start to uncover their passions and who they are as people. Because when we live aligned with our passions, it, it, it's a very different kind of life to the one we were previously living. And that was the big lesson for me. Um, and then at the end of last year, one of the things I did, because you, you will find the same thing with coaching, NLP, so Neuro Linguistic Programming, which of course you will have done a lot of in the work you did on yourself, cognitive behavior therapy, that kind yeah. of thing. It's great, but it's long. It's really long because yeah. you're literally changing yeah. people's, you're trying to change people's pathways. You're trying to change their programming that's been there forever. And yeah. they don't even realize that it's there. Yeah. Um, so I was looking for a way to, to just get my clients there quicker. And then, as you know, last year I qualified as a rapid transformation. That's my dog's nose. <laughs> a rapid transformation therapist, mm -hmm. um, which is where I use, I've been trained to use um, hypnosis yeah. uh, to really hone into what's going on with people, what's holding them back, and to change that, to change that pattern in, yeah. in 90 minutes under hypnosis. Yeah. And it's the most phenomenal tool I've ever come across. It's incredible the way you can access the subconscious, realize what's going on for you, realize that this is a story you picked up about yourself when you were five or you were eight or something like that. And it literally you are running your life on the same program. Yeah. And, and people have this 
aha moment where they will literally say, oh my God, I'm 45 and I'm running my life as if I'm five. And it's absolutely incredible. And I cannot wait for to really get into this year um, to, to start to speak about this, but also to do these sessions with people. I'm doing a few at the moment, but I don't have much time. But the results are mind blowing. I'm just, the, the results are beyond even what I expected. So I'm so excited. That's why I'm absolutely pouring myself into this. Yeah. As you know, to the degree that I'm actually leaving home, and I'm 53, I'm leaving home, <laughs> leaving my environment, yeah. my 23 year marriage, my restaurants, my son, my dog, everything. And I'm giving myself an unspecified amount of time away. I'm going back to my parents in the UK just to focus on this because I need the time and space to do it. And my life here is so busy and has so many demands on me yeah. that I can't do it here. So I've made the decision to remove myself and just focus on this. So that's where I'm at at the moment. <laughs> that's all. Um, that's all yeah it's gonna be a big year but I told myself it's going to be a big year so then it was I had to look at that well it's not going to be a big year by itself right so how am I going to make that happen yeah it, it, what have I got to do and the realization that I had all these other demands on my time that were just not going to allow me to do what I know I need to do are just really what led me to make that decision. It actually started with coming to San Diego to the speaker retreat with yeah. you. Yeah. So I I already had that in mind. Mm -hmm. And then something else came up in Italy in April. And there's also two things, uh, two events I want to go to in London. And it just seems sensible to kind of fit, fit it all together rather than keep yeah. flying from Australia. So that's how it came about that I just thought, well, I'll just go to Europe, go to my parents, where I know, like my parents are in their mid 70s. Mm -hmm. Do they get what I'm doing? No. But will they give me the time and space to do it? Absolutely. They're just going to leave me alone to do my thing. And I'm just so looking forward to that. That's going to be great. Feel, that's got to feel so profound on a soul level. Yeah. That feels, I, yeah, everything about me is excited about investing that time in myself wow. to just perfect this and to really, because I won't be doing nothing. I'll be working, you know, yeah, I'll be yeah, doing yeah. RTT sessions, but, and, and I'll be working on my speaking and things like that. But having the time to invest in myself and to feed into myself to become who I know I'm supposed to be. I just, every, every fiber in my body is excited. I'm kind of not as well, like it's a huge thing. I'm leaving Australia, I'm leaving my home. We've got this fantastic new restaurant and cocktail bar and everything. And I've poured myself into creating that. Yeah. And now I'm going to leave it because I know I should be doing something else. So it's a bit, it's very scary as well, but th there's nothing about me that ever questions and says, is this the right thing to do? As soon as I came up with that plan, I was just like, yeah, this is a big plan and this is a brave plan, but it's the right one. And I could just see where it was going to take me and the space it was going to open up for me. Because yeah. it creates space for me emotionally as well. It gives me time, but it gives me everything. That's what... Let's see if I can get this right, because for, on the surface, I love what you're doing. I love it on every level, but on the surface, it's just, it's just wonderful to see someone who is that willing to kind of like burn the ships, right? You know that? Experience? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was so, a journey. Yeah. And so that you, you, yeah. you're, you're giving yourself that you're jumping in before, you know, you're just jumping in and doing it. You're getting into action. You're getting out of comfort. All these things that we hear people say. It's it's really wonderful to be part of this because you are so just doing it, you know. But I think that life has a way of 
almost, you know, John Lennon said, life has a way of happening while we're busy making other plans, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Life has this way of just sort of pushing us into a situation, a corner, a life, a reality. And, um, yeah. and what, what I think speaks to me the most about what you're doing is I remember how I felt when I had a successful um, house painting company. So, so I'm a great house painter, really good, but I likely never paint a house again because it just was so what I fell into and not what I was meant to do. Yes, absolutely. You know? Uh, and that's the thing, you know, I, I have really successful business, mm -hmm. but it, it's, it's not about that. Right. And I have no doubt that this is going to be even better. Yeah. Because as soon as I started to just put Facebook posts out about this RTT that I can do, I've had more responses than I can deal with. I because saw I've been so busy with my other thing. Yeah. Um, and, and that for me, it was so frustrating. And everything about me... Uh, everything about my soul was drawn to wanting to be able to deal with what was coming to me in terms of those inquiries. And I was tied up elsewhere and I was yeah. so frustrated. And, yeah. th and that's why it was, uh, and that was before I even put those posts out, I'd already made that decision. And it just confirmed to me that giving myself that space, um, it was, was the best thing. And, and that this is just going, this is why I'm so excited about 2019. Yeah. I laid, I spent 2018 laying all the foundations. Mm -hmm. And my focus was actually, it's going to be a great year. It's going to be a great year. And now everything's in place. And that's what I'm focusing on. And, and I don't doubt because I've got to the place where th there are no barriers. There's nothing that I won't remove almost, you yeah. know, and there's no glass ceiling. Yeah. It's, it's like it's just me in this sphere doing my thing and it, it's it's got to take me somewhere it's got to there's nothing in the way except myself <laughs> except myself so and I, I kind of removed myself removed my barriers anyway i think i think but at least i'll recognize them if they come up i'm curious yeah do you feel that and I don't know why our conversation sparked this question in me, but do you feel that um, that there is a collective evolution of our consciousness as people? Oh, absolutely. Oh my goodness. It's, I, I just think that the way this comes up for me all the time when you look at, because I'm dealing with people's old programming, yeah. And I'm like you and me and the stuff that we went through and the stories we told ourselves and what got fed into us. And we are just so moving away from um, this whole, e even the idea of the nine to five job, putting people in boxes and this whole idea of exploring who we are. Do you know, I even get excited when I see new mums being yeah. told that self-care and time out is vital. Yeah. Absolutely vital. Because I have 22-year-old twins, mm -hmm. and the first five years of their life nearly killed me. Yeah. And no one, no one ever suggested that I might be losing myself, that my depression might be because I wasn't very good at being a stay-at-home mom. It wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. And no one ever suggested, Sarah, you need a day off. It was yeah. just grind, yeah. grind, grind. Yeah. And that's pretty much, I mean, I use that example because it means a lot to me. But pretty much in our lives, for, for 100 years, the last 100 years, we've lived our lives grind, grind, grind. Yeah. And now we're starting to realize, and all this personal development and things like that, it's, it's all becoming much more prevalent. And people yeah. are starting to question, well, I'm being told I should do this, but is that me? Right. Is that right? Yeah. Is that, and, and we're questioning and we're also becoming more, we're becoming more self-aware. We're becoming aware of our own value and our own worth um, and, and owning that. And it, it, all of those things, when they are input on a big scale, 
make a huge, huge difference to our environment, the people we're meeting, um, and also how receptive people are. If we've done the work ourselves, mm -hmm. how receptive other people are to that. Yeah. Some are not, that's for sure, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but, yeah, this huge, this huge collective consciousness, you can literally feel things shifting. That, Literally, that's you know, people are coming into people are almost accepting that yoga and meditation and hypnosis is a, a deeper form of meditation. Uh -huh. Those things are like people are incorporating those things into their daily lives, yeah. And even breathing exercises and things like that. It's and you know, 20 years ago, no one knew what yoga was, and now there are as many yoga studios as coffee shops, yeah. And it's because people want this. People want this place to go and sit and relax mm -hmm. and and be themselves. Yeah. And people are wanting to find themselves rather than be told who they are. And I, I love this. I wish I could be 20 again yeah, and I do know. this again. But it's okay. I'm, I'm 53 and I got there. So, you know, it's okay. I wish I could be 20 again, but know everything that I know now. Uh, that's that's the secret. Yeah. That's that's. Wouldn't that be awesome? Imagine, like we we would rock the world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I um. Yeah. I think that. Uh, uh, I'm not think. I'm curious as to. I feel that the the evolution of our awareness as humans is speeding up. Yeah. And I have no way to prove this because my own memory is subjective of the last. 51 years and but when we when we read you know literature from the last hundred years it seems as though there's a correlation between solving the more mundane problems like food shelter existence not dealing with bears and lions you know that kind of stuff um and what the more that we solve the mundane challenges the more it feels like we give ourselves we create for ourselves the room to explore these higher higher levels of awareness and consciousness. Absolutely. And and that's totally in line with Maslow's hierarchy, isn't it? Yes, Where at the exactly. bottom you've got your yeah. your think your basics to survive and then as you start to go through you get more time and space to work on yourself. And you're saying you think this it, it seems to be growing faster. And I agree with you. And I think it's just because as more of us get on board, right. more of us are on that level and more of us are spreading that message. And even if you haven't got people spreading that message as coaches or um, online, you've got people who are, who are that in their lives. Yeah. And other people are seeing that example. You know, if, you, if someone can see you have a row with someone and stay cool and calm and in control. And then they're saying, wow, how did you do that? And look at the effect. Yeah. Then people, people want that. When you start to become something that other people want to be, mm -hmm. it, or, or you display characteristics that other people want, yeah. and there are many, many more people doing that. And yeah. of course, the, the growth becomes exponential almost because more people are seeing it and experiencing it. And all this workplace culture and things like that, you know, the things we do in the workplace, I run all my businesses on leading with emotional intelligence. Yeah. And I expect my staff to do the same. I expect them to take it on board. I expect my managers to do it. I, I don't, I work in an industry, hospitality industry, aside from my coaching, which is rife for staff turnover. Yeah. And I have very little, I have very little staff turnover because of the workplace environment that we create and because of the value that I place on people. Um, and people see that. And, and my staff, it affects my staff. It affects who they are. Yeah. I'm constantly telling them, you know, you're not, you're not just, a, they'll say, oh, I'm just a weight person, you're not just a weight person, you know, and I'll try and get them to explore beyond that, just a weight person and, and feed more value into them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and when you've got thousands of people doing that, when you've got people, businesses being run in different ways, 
schools have got a long way to go. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's, That's a different... I, I feel, I feel, I feel for teachers, there must be some phenomenal teachers out there mm -hmm. who are despairing at what they are seeing I in the imagine. classroom. Yeah. You wouldn't believe in the RTT work that I'm doing, how many of the scenes that people go back to that taught them that they're not good enough oh, um, right. are from yeah. school. Yeah, right here. I've, 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 uh, and me too, mine are from school, and I thought it was all from being bullying. But when I've had RTT done on me and I've done regressions to find out where this story all came from, I'm bringing up things from teachers, you yeah. know, and, and quite a few that I had forgotten about. And you think, wow, I was that age and I had an adult telling me that, an adult in authority telling me that, telling me that. God, yeah. no wonder I ended up not thinking much of myself. Right. You know, so I think for the brilliant teachers out there, they must be knocking their heads and going what am I doing how can I make a difference uh, but now our education system needs a I think it needs erasing and starting again because it's not really benefiting many people yeah but there you go that's just my opinion I'm sorry there'll be people jumping in going oh my god you know <laughs> what are you saying and it's just my opinion that's my observation I think um, that yeah someone else would have a different one it's it's a uh... It's inevitable that institutions adapt more slowly because the, yeah. core, the core of any institution is bureaucracy. Absolutely. And bureaucracy by definition is self-serving. So yeah. we're gonna, we're gonna um, shift gears here and I hope you got your bat ready because I'm gonna give you the softball. You ready? It's gonna come right over, okay. the, right over the plate for you now. Um, you, My are, work. you are successful. You are happy. You are yes. You are in the process of deeper and deeper slash higher and higher levels of self, um, self uh, self actualization. Self actualization. Uh, yeah. could be it might be easy for people to think, oh, well, that's great for Sarah, but it's probably always been that way for her. <laughs> well, as you know, no, this is. Honestly, this has been such a journey, as you know. Yeah. And it's it's nearly eight years. Yeah. Are there eight years? It's nearly eight years since I nearly killed myself, as you know. I nearly committed suicide because I was so in despair of who I was. Yeah. I I had such programming. Yeah. And you I know that you relate to this. <laughs> around not being good enough, yeah. being bullied at school because I was poor. Mm -hmm. And it just, I, I had, until I was 45, I had no self-confidence, no self-esteem. Um, and I, I got to the point where I absolutely loathed who I was. Yeah. And I just couldn't see a way out. And as you know, I nearly killed myself. Yeah. But the good thing is I didn't. But it was the catalyst for me to say, you're not that person. You've never been that person. Now get your shit together and yeah. do something about it. And yeah. it's taken me eight years. I want to just stop here a second and open this up for people um, who are watching now or find this in, in the future. Um, I think it's valuable for everyone to understand that there's a popular conception of struggling and having problems that... yeah tends to give struggling and having problems um, without any any kind of proof to back this up, it tends to give it a shorter timeline. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. We tend to think of, you know, challenges uh, in terms of going through a divorce or losing a job and finding another one and things like that, right? Without even consciously being aware of it. And so what I think is so what I love about you so much, I'm just going to come right out and say it. And what I relate to as well is some of us, many of us who don't really get this, don't get a voice in a sense, um, have gone through decades of struggle, decades yeah. of, yeah. of misery and suffering and all this stuff, you know, for whatever set of reasons. And so 
I want us now to speak to anyone who sees this, who feels like they're maybe, I'm just going to pick an arbitrary example. They're 35, they're 40, and they feel like their whole life has been a challenge. Yeah. Right? Not just, not just a life with some big challenges in it, but their whole life has been a challenge. And briefly, I'll say that when I was, when I was writing my own story, Sarah, my own book, I was reading through it and I was like, fuck, I better put some sunshine in here somewhere. <laughs> you know? <laughs> because it, yeah. it just, it just felt like challenge after challenge after challenge yeah. after challenge. What we can attest to that is a huge part of my mission is to be a living example that even if that was the case, you can turn it around, you can change it, you can have an evolution that is so rapid that it would make people's heads spin because you are passionately in love with your life. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, and myself. And yourself. And that's, that's really, that's the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the key. Yeah. That took me such a long time. Yeah. And the reason I love that you've brought up that there are going to be people who have lives that they just think, my whole life is just one challenge. Right. And, and I can totally relate to that. And the reason is, the reason is because we are all running our lives feeling as if we're not good enough. Yeah. Not good enough is the key thing. That, there's three, three reasons that people have all these problems in their lives. And this comes up under the rapid transformation therapy all the time. And the roots of every problem, the roots of 95% of them are I'm not good enough. Yeah. I'm not good enough. And it's a program that we take from our, a young age. Yeah. And at some point, our mind sees something, or we hear, I'm not good enough, or we don't feel good enough. And in many cases, I did one the other day where a woman was, she was so emotional, and it was, it was so good. It was such a good session. And her first scene, she was two years old, sitting on the stairs, between her mum and her dad, who were both drunk, and they were fighting and screaming and throwing things. And she's sitting in the middle of them, thinking, I should stop this. Right. She's two. Yeah. But I'm not big enough. Yeah. I can't do anything. Yeah. Was her, was her, and that was then her programming. Yeah. At two years old. That's what she just said. Obviously, she'd seen so much of this stuff. I'm not saying that one-off incident. But this started in her, this pattern of, I'm not good enough. I'm not big enough. I'm not strong enough. I can't do it. And obviously, by the time she was five, this had, she, she'd experienced this hundreds of times. Yeah. So her neural pathway was running on the programming. Mm -hmm. And we all don't have something as dramatic as that. But for me, it was the bullying at school you know, of, of being poor. It's, it wasn't my fault. I, it was, I couldn't control my environment, but I had this whole thing and it just created this whole program in me of I'm not good enough. I can't fit in. I can't connect. I'm not worthy. All these things. And yeah, and this is the program that we're working to. And this is why we all struggle. And, and this is why so many people have hopes, dreams and plans but they don't put them in place because the underlying programming is I'm not good enough. And your subconscious will step in to stop you because you've told it, you can't do that. Right. And it's when you overcome that I've done, I've done so much work, but when you learn your own value and your own worth and you can stand in that, it's, it's, com it's a completely different way of living. And I've had challenges beyond the last two weeks, running a new bar and restaurant just before Christmas. Yeah. Challenges beyond. But I've always known my own value in it. And it means that it means also that people can't people can't diminish you. And people people are also very careful about how they speak to me. Yeah. Because I I don't allow anyone to speak to me with any kind of contempt or anything like that at all. And people know that about me now. But when and when you can stand in that and and you just 
if someone speaks to you in a way you don't like, you just give them a look and they just back off. <laughs> you know, that's just like, don't, don't mess with me because I'm worth more than that and I'm not going to let you. Yeah. And that's, that's very, very powerful. And that took me a long time to get there. But that's why I'm able to give myself this time. I didn't ask anyone for permission for that time that I was speaking about, that four months at least that I'm taking. I just said, this is what I'm doing and I'm doing it for myself. Yeah. Absolutely. It took done. a long time to get there. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, that's one of the messages I wanted both of us to, to put out there into the world. Um, just because even your whole life up to this date may be perceived by you as brutal, challenging, relentless, whatever, does not mean that you cannot change. And I don't mean a 5, 10, 15, 20% change. I mean a fucking global change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can. And, and w when you want to, and when you apply yourself to, when, when you apply yourself to do it, um, and when you're committed to doing it, definitely, you, you can absolutely, you can change the whole thing. And I think the key is as well, this is what I find when I work with people, and you'll find it too, to accept responsibility. Yeah. You know, except the, that day, that day that I nearly killed myself was, I told you when I, when I said, just sort your shit out. Just, just get to grips with this now. I didn't expect it to take eight years, but I didn't know where it would take me. Yeah. And I accepted responsibility. And I, I stopped blaming other people. And that is the key. As, as long as you can blame someone else for anything, like there were lots of people I could have blamed if I don't go on this four month trip. Yeah. I could have said, oh, the restaurant's too busy. It's too hard. My husband's making a fuss. Who's gonna look after the dog? What about my son? You know, he's 22, by the way. I'm not running away and leaving a six year old to fend for himself. <laughs> But all these things, but you recognize them as excuses. Yeah. They're just excuses. And you look at them and you say, okay, so this is a barrier. How do I get over it? How do I remove it? Rather than, oh, this is a barrier, so I can't do it. Yeah. And you just remove things. And it's when you accept that you're responsible. And I knew that if I had this idea for this trip and I didn't do it, I am responsible. I can't blame anyone else. And that is a very, um, that's a very different space to stand in when, when you take responsibility for everything. Sure, you're going to have a starting point. And that's this whole thing about the past doesn't matter. Yeah. The past doesn't matter. What matters is from the second you realize the past doesn't matter and you say you want a different future, what matters is everything that you do in every minute, every second from here to take you towards what you say you want. That's and that and that's what and that's where the transformation happens when you own it and you take responsibility for it. And you just I, I never let myself blame anyone else for anything because it's it's always it, that's not helpful to me. It's always helpful to me when I just say, no, no matter what they did, I'm responsible for my actions and my reactions. And it's my actions and reactions that take me on to the next step. It doesn't matter what anyone else does. And that's a big realization as well. Yeah. And that's a really helpful realization. That really does move you on very fast. Yeah. Very fast. So I want to thank you for coming on this member spotlight. I want to. Thank you. I want to say to whoever is watching or watches this later, uh, she's insanely busy, but she's also available for to, to be on your podcast. <laughs> yes. Yes, oh, that's a big thing for me this year. Yeah. Yes, I'm loving doing podcasts. And to give people RTT sessions. If yeah. people just want to message me, find out more, find out what their blocks might be, how RTT helps them get over them. It's phenomenal. It's, you know, I, I just did a session with a lady who's been drinking for 20 years. And uh, we stopped her drinking in a 90-minute session. Boom! It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> And I've, I've done the same with a gambler as well. Yeah. 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 RT and yeah. I mean, those, those are extremes. But the blocks that keep you stuck, they're easy to uncover. And then we just shift them. It's very different. Yeah. yeah. It's exciting. It is very exciting. Thank you. It's exciting. To Thank you so much.
it's my pleasure. It's exciting to be part of your journey, to watch it. Um, I can't wait to meet you in person. And I know, this is a <laughs> retreat. Yeah. So exciting. Oh my goodness. I'm really going to be unstoppable after that. That's, yeah. that's kind of my, <laughs> that's my big thing to get speaking next year. Imagine going out and speaking to people about this. Oh, it's gonna, that's why I want to do it. It's going to be phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Is, uh, I hope so. I hope so. So that's so, speaking for me. That coming to that retreat is. Oh, I'm just so excited to start my year off in that way. It's going to be brilliant. For those of you guys watching, Sarah is a member of your community. Reach out to her. Uh, get to know her. Connect with her. Talk about RTT with her. Whatever you want to do. Uh, the purpose of these is to start building community between you guys. And uh, oftentimes we don't know how cool and uh, exciting and awesome the person right next to us is. So allow me to introduce you guys. <laughs> Sarah, Thank everyone, you. everyone, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. It's great. Yeah. I and if I, people can just message me if yeah. I can help at all, you know, no worries. Well, I know for you, it's the starting of your day. So have an amazing day. And uh, I'll be, we'll be in contact, of course, as we always are. Of course. Yes. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Sarah. Bye.